What do you think when you hear Acela? To most people living in the northeastern United States, it's the high-speed train that runs between Boston and Washington. To people outside of the northeast, maybe it's just a cool sounding word. To anyone who has an interest in trains, Acela means so much more than just any train. It's America's first high-speed train, so how did we get here? Let's go back to the beginning. It's October 1st, 1964. Japan has just unveiled a train unlike no other. It's streamlined, aerodynamic, and it looks like it could fly if it had wings. They're calling it the Shinkansen, roughly translating to bullet train. The Shinkansen served not only as an impressive engineering feat, but as a sign that Japan was making an economic recovery from World War II. In addition to the Shinkansen, other countries like France were beginning to make streamlined trains as well, such as France with the TGV. America, not wanting to be late to the party, kickstarted its own plans to have a high-speed rail system with the High-Speed Ground Transportation Act of 1965, signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson. This act gained bipartisan support, winning by a landslide of 409 to 23. This law created America's first high-speed train, Penn Central's Metroliner, a service between New York and Washington, D.C. on Penn Central's electrified Northeast Corridor. This service used a new Bud Metroliner train sets, which would regularly see speeds of up to 125 miles per hour in service. Metroliner service would begin on January 16th, 1969 under the Penn Central and proved to be a success. These trains came close to the top speed of the Shinkansen with a top speed of 125 miles per hour, only five short of the Shinkansen's 130. The only issue was that the Metroliner rarely actually hit these speeds and for most of the trip would stay below 90 miles per hour, an issue that still haunts the Acela of modern day. With the infamous bankruptcy of the Penn Central in 1970, service was cut until 1971 when Amtrak was created as a government-funded rail service network to replace the deteriorating privately run passenger trains. Amtrak continued this service under the same Metroliner moniker, a household name for many. This service also continued with the same Metroliner train sets until the mid-1980s when they were replaced by locomotives pulling cars due to the Metroliner sets being less than reliable. countries all around Europe and Asia developed their own faster and more modern high-speed rail networks, the United States fell behind, boasting the now not-so-impressive 125 mile per hour top speeds. At this point, it's the late 1980s and the US government wants to improve the Metroliner service and offer something faster. Proposals came and went for the next few years, even with potential high-speed train sets coming to the US for testing. Sweden had the S2000, no, not the Honda, the X2000 train set to offer, Germany had the Ice One, and Denmark had the ICE Flexliner. All three were deemed not suitable for America for various reasons. It was back to the drawing board, this time with an original design. An original design from Bombardier and Alstom was chosen and named the Acela Express. Plans were unveiled to the public on March 9, 1999. Twenty electric train sets were to be constructed, all a power car, six semi-permanently coupled cars, and another power car. Not only were these trains capable of a top speed of 150 miles per hour, but they would enter service right as the Northeast Corridor was electrified between Boston and New Haven. Prior to 2000, all trains had to switch to diesel power to make the journey to Boston, but not for much longer. The brand new Acela Express service with all new train sets made its maiden voyage on December 11, 2000 from Washington DC to Boston with generally positive feedback. It arrived on track 9 at South Station to news cameras and a fireworks show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome America's first high-speed express train, Acela! Finally, America has its own high-speed bullet train like Japan, and they're only 35 years late to the party. Well, not really. Much like the Metroliner, the Acela only hits its top speed of 150 miles per hour for a short stretch of track in Massachusetts and another short stretch in Rhode Island. It's estimated that it would cost $112 billion to improve the existing infrastructure to support consistent speeds of 150 miles per hour. Other than not really being that fast, the Acela became a household name and a success. The Acela has always been one of Amtrak's most profitable routes as they can charge more for tickets boasting higher speeds and better service. The Acela train sets were also decently reliable, especially for high-powered electric train sets. The new Acela power cars were insanely powerful, making 6,200 horsepower each, and there were two per train set, 12,400 horsepower to propel six cars, definitely a lot of power even for a high-speed train. By the mid-2010s, the Acelas were beginning to show their age. I mean, look at those seats. One even uncoupled while doing 80 miles per hour. Future. Future. 
On August 26, 2016, Vice President Joe Biden granted Amtrak a $2.45 billion loan for the procurement of new Acela train sets to replace the aging sets currently in use. French manufacturer Alstom was chosen as the candidate to build these 28 new train sets. Concept art for the new Alstom Avalia Liberty train sets was released to the public on August 26, 2016, when Amtrak uploaded this now iconic video of computer-generated mock-ups of the Liberty train sets. New features Amtrak boasted were top speeds of 220 miles per hour, tilting technology that allows the train to take corners at higher speeds, and new interiors. In this video you can see that this was the pre-production concept paint scheme, which is much different from the one Amtrak eventually decided on. Personally, I think the concept paint scheme is much better looking than whatever this is. These new trains have a power car, 9 cars, and another power car. All power cars will be numbered 2100 through 2155 with each power car possessing 4700 horsepower each for a total of 9400 horsepower per train. Yes, that's less powerful than the previous generation of Acela, but they're much more efficient and can perform better than the first gen Acelas despite not being as powerful. Assembly began on these train sets in 2017 at Austin's plant in Hornell, New York, with the first set being completed in January of 2020 and subsequently sent off to TTCI in Pueblo, Colorado for high-speed testing. A month later, the second train set was finished and sent to Amtrak in Philadelphia. This second set sat around there until mid-summer 2020 when it began testing between Philadelphia and Harrisburg and Philadelphia and DC. Soon enough, the Liberty made its way up to New York and eventually to Boston to test. After Amtrak completes testing, it will send this train set back to Alstom for interior furnishings and then it will be put into service in 2021. The new Avalia Liberty or Acela 21 train sets as Amtrak calls them will initially run with a top speed of 160 mph, but eventually they'll get up to 220 mph once the infrastructure is improved. Until then, the original Acela train sets will be phased out and slowly replaced by Liberty train sets until 2022 when all 28 train sets will be in service and their 20 year old Acela train sets will finally be retired after a long service life. In conclusion, the new Acelas may truly be America's first high-speed rail that can hold a candle to those of other countries. With infrastructure improvements already in the works, it's clear to see that Amtrak wants to make progress towards the future. With prospects of high-speed rail carriers such as Brightline on the come-up, Amtrak will have to be on their A-game to compete. To rail fans out there, catch the old Acelas while you can. They may seem all identical and boring right now, but in a few years from now you'll find yourself reminiscing about when the Acelas had real horns, not squeaky two-chime things. Enjoy what you have right now, and Amtrak, please, why do your new trains have to look like a platypus? Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Over the past year I've been actively trying to make more engaging content with more substance than just a train passing by. I'd love to start uploading less frequently, like once a month, but make high quality videos such as this. Let me know what you think of that idea in the comments. Maybe I could do a hybrid of just train videos and mini documentary videos like this? Not sure, I have so many ideas. Also a rail fan podcast is kinda in the works. By that I mean I'm considering doing it. The logistics are tough to work out and I'm not really sure what I'd even talk about. As I just said, I have a bunch of ideas but it's hard to put a lot of time into creating content like this with school taking priority. Getting out and actually rail thing has been tough lately as my entire personal life has just gotten a whole lot busier as things are starting to slowly open back up with COVID. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I honestly can't believe that there are so many people out there who enjoy watching me talking about trains. Anyways, I kind of feel like I'm rambling here so I'll just cut it off here. Thanks for watching. Bye.